YouTubers, this is Nurse J at Nursing the Truth, and I hope everyone is having a great day. So, go back and watch my videos about the bright and morning star of Osiris. So, truth seekers, let's kind of dig a little deeper into the story of Osiris and Set. Now, we understand about these Anunnaki gods and that in each civilization, these players were the same gods, per se, but different names and their attributes were maybe the same with a little twist and turn. Now, <clears throat> From what I have heard in the past, that Enlil did kill Inki, but that is not written down in the Sumerian text. But what text could it be written in, and for what reason? Well, truth seekers, let's think about it. Osiris was killed by his brother Set, the storm god. He wanted to rule both lands. And he killed Osiris, and Osiris was married to his sister. Isis, the mother of all living, and Inki was with Ninhursag in Sumeria. And she was called the mother of all living. So is there a correlation to this? And when Isis found the body parts of Osiris and brought it back, God Thoth was there. And she turned into a falcon and hovered over the private area. And she got pregnant. And on the temple walls, it shows her sitting in the birth chair having Horus, which is called the Christ. Now, you know the beginning of that story. And it's funny because in Egypt and Abydos, by Seti's tomb area, there is called a siren, the funerary place of Osiris. They found it back in, I believe, 2015. It's three levels down under the ground, and there is water. Here recently, black goo was found in the sarcophagi. The tomb lid was removed, and there is prints of black goo above the boulders of the sarcophagi, but no Osiris. Where is Osiris? The Avenger. So, is Inky and Osiris the same? Personages? This leads to the possibility of authenticating the amphibian affiliations of Inki Osiris as well, as with the Abgal designers of life from Sirius. Those which were considered to be Charistai. Now, together with the facts and the connections with Christi, with the Christ symbolized by the morning star and the hermetic passage of the Bible, thank you, God Thoth. Thank you. 
thus in turn leads to interpretation of the meaning of the various crosses found in different parts of the world. Also explore the sacrificial tradition of the Dogon tribe, which recounts the death of Nomo, the Christ of Mali. <clears throat> also, follow the ancient path of Neb Haru, Horus, slash Venus, the orbit that goes from the light into the darkness. All these discoveries lead to the resounding evidence that the Mesopotamian astron Neb Aru, Nibiru and the Egyptian Neb Haru form the same astral image. There are deep connections between the object Venus and Horus, Neb Haru with Osiris identified as its progenitor. Throughout the books of Zechariah Stitchin, which you can take it with a grain of salt if you like, has ascribed the remarkable longevity of the Anunnaki to their home dwelling place, the planet Nibiru, whose orbital period is 3,600 Earth years. He says, means that every year of the life of an Anunnaki god equals 3,600 years of human life. It says that no one challenges Stitchin on this nutty idea as a tribute to the cultish quality of the following. However, he was challenged once at a public appearance in the Bay Area. And this Arthur says, I simply ask him how he might justify the assertion that longevity and aging are linked to the question, I mean, excuse me, to the length of a planet's year. He said, next question. <coughs> And when I'm done, I'm going to give you the website I'm looking this up for anyway. So I'm just kind of scrolling down here. This is a lot of information. I'm trying to do this in a short period of time so I don't go over. The Great Pyramid is a place where the god Osiris was conceived and resuscitated as Horus, the first divine king of Egypt. And it said the body of Osiris equipped for the great voyage was placed in the sarcophagi in the chamber known as the kings, while the two mothers, Isis and Nephthys, were stationed in the lower chamber queens to produce the sun, the divine falcon. In the ancient Egyptians' Book of the Dead, the falcon is proclaimed to have the head of a phoenix because of the feathered crest of brilliant colors and it shows us connected to another passage of the Rig Veda in hymn number 10 concerning the birth of the royal infant Kumara, heir of the throne. The deceased assimilated to Horus explains what he sees, what he lives. And the passage in the sense of the hymn number 10 says, I came today from the land of Ruddy, which means the double lion. I left there to go to the dwelling place of Isis the Divine. I have seen the secret mysteries having been conducted to the hidden retreats because they have made me see the birth of the great God. Horus has granted me his soul, and I have seen what was there. I am the one who has been charged with bringing his thoughts to Osiris and to the Duat. Were these not the functions of Inki and Mesopotamia and of Osiris and Egypt? The Mahabharata indicates that Jamadani, the terrestrial father of Venus, was assassinated by a king and his son belonged to a warrior caste. We know that Osiris was assassinated by Seth 
and his proud partners. The murder of Enki does not appear to exist on the Mesopotamian tablets because his assassination did not take place in Sumer. Now, the Abzu. The ancient Egyptian priest in the service of the Osirian cult succeeded in partly hiding the murder of Osiris and in reviving their god, notably in his principal temple at Abydos in Upper Egypt. The objective of the technique was to cause Osiris, the dead god, to speak through the voice of a carefully hidden priest. Thus, the initiate, after a long journey and a beneficial ritual bath in the temple water, had the impression of hearing the voice of Osiris while viewing the holy relic at Abydos, the head of the Egyptian god. This simulation, no doubt, evoked the fixed and glassy-eyed or expressionless aspect of Enki in his Abzu, surrounded by water. So I'm looking at some pictures right now, and now I'm getting to the other part. Okay. Arthur says, Thus, this image indicates that the Osirian was covered by the sea at some point in time. And that means the Osirian predates the last great world flood dating more than 10,000 years ago. At least this is a supplementary proof. There were sea shells found, but there is no shellfish in the Nile. Abydos, the site was sufficiently important that each Egyptian made a pilgrimage there at least once in their life. The Sumerian word is very similar to the Egyptian hieroglyphic for the sacred city of Osiris. It's spelled A-B-D-J-U, Abydos. There is no Z in Egyptian. A modern language correspondence may be illuminating from the Latin absolve. In Christianity, to absolve of one's trespasses through a sacrament of, pit of pittance is exactly what the initiates of Egypt did as they presented themselves in the Asarian of Abydos. In the third volume of the book, it says that the body of Osiris was originally interred under the Giza Plateau, Afterward, to be dispersed and brought back together in several temples of the time in the Egyptian territory. The principal sanctuary of Enki was situated at Eridu. The aquatic temple that symbolized the primordial waters bore the name Iabzu, the dwelling place of the Abzu. And according to tradition, when he was not in the Abzu, the subterranean world, Enki usually lived in this type of temple with his wife, where they were accompanied by saintly carp, who later became priests or purifiers. The term Abzu came to serve to designate parts of certain sanctuaries associated with extensions of natural or artificial bodies of water in the form of basins and copses of roses and sacred trees. And in Egypt, the aquatic temple of Osiris at Abydos gives but a small idea of the Mesopotamian Abzu sanctuaries, of which there remain only very few vestiges today, but is without doubt the first of a series dedicated to Enki Osiris. Abydos was a necropolis where the Egyptian sovereigns all had their sepulchers, its local divinity, the first of the accidental Westerners, which is to say the first God from the Occident. The Occident was regarded by the Egyptians as their ancestors' place of origin, and this was the land 
Atlantis, the country of Ptah. Please refer to the decoder entry for Ptah. As we've seen the first of the Occidentals, there was no other than Sam Inki before the designation was attributed to Usar or Osiris upon his death. Amen Ptah, decoder, refers to Atlantis, the homeland from which came a part of the ancient Egyptians. After its successive engulfments, the island of Amenhotep was progressively transformed into the Amenti or the Amenta, the Occident or West, the world beyond the terrestrial life of the Egyptian cultures where the ancestors lived. We must not fail to connect the Amenti with the surname given to Iki Ia and Imsel Amenki, Lord of Heaven and Earth. Archaeologists have always agreed on the great antiquity of the Osirian that in fact it is the oldest structure found in Egypt, the more radical of which places it at 11,000 to 12,000 years ago before the The Egyptians also named Abju Taor, the Great Earth. The term was also evoked in a way, the hill of the origins, the primordial land of the Egyptian gods. To the Mesopotamians, the hill of the, excuse me, the hill of the origins is the Duku, the celestial realm where the Anuna gods were created. And in Egypt, it seems more to be the land of the ancestors, that is to say, at the time of Amenpata Atlantis, from which rose a majority of the Egyptians in the Abzu, the subterranean world. Inky. Many correspondences between Inky Ia and Osiris. The Sumerian word Ingur generally designated the underground waters of the Abzu and the subterranean world. It was often employed as a synonym of Abzu. Ingur also corresponded to the Akkadian term Apsu. It was saintly name associated with the goddess Namu and her son Inki. We can depose the term as Inger 8 and translate it in two ways. The Lord of the profoundness or depths again to the depths. And there was a hieroglyph, E-N-K-H-U-U-R, called for the glory of the prince. The cuneiform sign for Inger resembles the plan of the Osirian of Osiris at Abydos, and it says, Inki, Lord of Earth, declines to Ea, master of the temple of the water in Akkadian. And it shows the Egyptian image, a symbolic representation of the Osiris in Abydos. The hidden meanings of the Inger of Inki, such as place, where one restores the heart or place absorbed in response correspond perfectly with the diverse Egyptian temples such as the Osirian, in which were sheltered tombs in honor of Osiris. The Ankh is the symbol of life. The planet Venus as the morning star was also considered as the new sun by the ancient Egyptians and was none other than Horus, the Egyptian Christ. In summary, the 
Um, Arthur says and has shown a number of connections between the Mesopotamian Enki Ea and the Egyptian god Osiris with notions relating to the resurrection of the Egyptian god. He mentions that numerous Egyptian cities possess culture centers designated as Per'ank, house of life, generally attached to major temples of the kings. And it says we may compare them to schools for learning distinct sciences following disciplinary such as history, astronomy, writing, and the city of Abydos was reputed to have specialized in medicine. Interestingly, Inki, Ea, in the eyes of the Sumerians, the great doctor, the healing serpent of the gods. The Egyptian term Abju, which is Abydos, possesses a homophone whose sense is fish. The sacred fish served as pilot of the solar bark of Ra. Its function was to warn the passengers of the bark of enemies sent by Seth. We have no difficulty in identifying the Abydos fish with a symbolic horus or even better reincarnated Osiris. While the Sumerian counterpart of Osiris is Enki who himself possessed the fish symbol. The fish that precedes the solar bark is evidently the planet Venus, which today leads, at least it does sometimes, the course of the sun. So I'm looking down some more. The name Osiris or Usar, U-S-I-R, equals the seat of the eye, was given to Sa'am after his death by the Egyptians who knew his true name. We also mention at the beginning of this of the um, story that Sa'am Inki Osiris was considered by certain Ginnabaul as being a Kuristai. At the end of the book Genesis, there is a description of the rite of resurrection of which Sa'am Inki was the object. There was an occult Egyptian concept that considered Osiris the premier dead and resuscitated God as being symbolically transmuted into the morning star before reincarnating as Horus. And in the New Testament, Jesus declares himself the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the progeny of the race of David and the radiant morning star. The initiation ritual in the Siren Temple of Abydos is reminiscent of the early Sumerian one that led the gods to the Inger of Inki, Ea, and the Apsu and the subterranean world. It states, you enter the earth. Geb, God of the earth, opens himself for you. You enter the subterranean hall under the sacred trees. You have arrived now near to the God Osiris, the God who sleeps in his sepulcher. His true image reclines on his funeral bed, Heket, who blends the breath. And in Samaria, Cadian is a goddess with the head of an amphibian. She wears the alt sign, which is her attribute par excellence. Heket is a primordial deity 
who gives life and she forms the infant in the maternal belly. She is the saintly obstetrician. The goddess contributes to the regeneration of Osiris and the Osirian of Abydos and to the conception of Horus as the resurrection of his father. In all these attributes, she resembles the goddess Nut, mother of Osiris, one who knows to be the double of Namu, the mother of Enki herself, a Phibian in nature. In Judaism, Jesus is the envoy of the God who will restore Israel to its rights and inaugurate the era of justice. For the Egyptians, just as goddess named Ma'at, she accompanies Osiris at the time, rendering Osiris justice in the hidden world of the dead. Ma'at judges the soul of humans and proceeding to the weighing of the heart of which Horus is in the divine form while Osiris pronounces the judgment. Again, the Bible compiled by the Hebrew priest does not miss the opportunity to base itself on the esoteric Egyptian ideology. 2 Peter 1.19 you are advised to regard it, the prophetic word, as a lamp shining in a dark place until the day begins to break and the morning star rises in your hearts. It's unbelievable. I'm sorry, I'm just looking down here at this uh, thing here. Okay, here we go. I thought I was going to have some more down here. I'm sorry, guys. So, I think a lot of people need to do studies on Osiris. And I think they need to do, okay, let me show you. Okay, guys, um, this information that I'm reading, it's on the website called Biblio, B-I-B-L-I-O-T-E-C-A-P-L-E-Y-A-D-E-S dot net. And the title on this website is called The Ages of Urias, U-R-A-S, and it's by Gary Zetlin, Gary, G-E-R-R-Y, Zetlin, Z-E-I-T-L-I-N, and it was um, published in 2007. So... <clears throat> That's what I'm telling you. Who are these Anunnaki gods? Where did they go? When they left Atlantis, they spread out in different areas of the world. Fighting. But there's a reason why one of these gods was so important. Every one of the gods had a special purpose. And Inki was the god of metallurgy. 
was crafty. He was intelligent. He was wise. And he knew how to resurrect people. Now in the Samaria tablets, he did not give his son Marduk the power or the knowledge of resurrection. Onana and Soth, Nigashida, had the power of resurrection. Now, now that we know and we're putting pieces together, is Inky coming? You see, the video that I made about Aquaman being inky, some people say he was Gilgamesh. But I'm not, I, I'm not going to go with a Gilgamesh. I'm going to go with a more inky because of Atlantis. Gilgamesh had nothing to do with Atlantis. So, <clears throat> he gives back judgment. Inky was over Africa. He was over Africa. That was his lot. So if he is your Osiris, and he was killed by his brother, And he was resurrected and reincarnated through his son, Horus the Christ. And then Christ is supposed to come back in this biblical version that we have. Is it really inky? Who is this? Golden Age. God thought says in his writings of prophecy that when nation rise against nation and father against son and that when half of mankind is destroyed by a weapon then shall the sons of the morning return and stop the fighting and we will stop fighting against brother against brother and God thaw says and then Atlantis shall rise beneath the ocean waves and they shall rule again Divine judgment and the light will shine and it will decimate darkness. What a great time we are living in. I want to experience this. I want to see this for myself. I want to see passages come to life. And Osiris' tomb is empty. Inky, have you resurrected yourself? Have you reincarnated back? Pata was the great father and the creator of mankind, just as Prometheus. Inky, Poseidon, Neptune, and the list goes on and on. He had sons and daughters. Poseidon at Atlantis had sons that were kings. And he married a mortal woman. And 
and then Ptah in Egypt was worshipped in Memphis. It's Akara under the reign of Dozier. Amhotep. Doth, was that you that reincarnated them? The great architect. So until next time, guys, go check out your work on Osiris. Check out the stories of the Rig Vedas and the Egyptian stories and the Sumerian tablets. But Osiris was killed by the jealous set. Is it fact? Is it mythology? Is it an urban legend? Does the stuff have any truth to it? Could be. Until next time, God Thoth says he loves you. Always search for the truth. And guess what? The truth is going to set you free, my friends. And Thoth says all things will be revealed. Check it, guys, out later. Hotel.